Emily Hawthorne is a Middle East and North Africa analyst at Stratford. I spoke to her about the conflict in Syria and how it's evolved in the current crisis. Well, I think it's important to remember that this war and, and this anniversary began uh, because this conflict was an internal uprising of Syrians against the government, really, truly at its heart, a civil conflict. And that, uh, that core nucleus of the war has endured throughout the seven years. So you have that um, first layer of the conflict. Um, and, and that will persist until, until the brutal end. Then you have the second layer of regional influence, where you have Syria being used as a playing field, as a battleground for fighting for um, different motives for uh, shaping the way that the map of the Middle East and the way that governments in the Middle East are run. And, and that's where you saw the involvement of some of the GCC states, um, Turkey to some extent, uh, Iran to some extent. Um, that's what brought in a lot of these regional players. And then you have um, external powers, Russia, um, which entered in 2015. You have the United States, which uh, intervened to fight ISIS um, in 2014, but of course was also active um, supporting um, some Syrian rebels. So you have those three layers, the local civil conflict, um, you have the regional, and then you have the, the extra regional as well. I mean, all three of them have, have endured, but waxed and waned to different extents. And so talk to me about that layering. How has that made this even more complex, would you say? Uh, you know, it, it is correct to think about Syria as this tragic maelstrom of, of these um, different interests, because every one of these players, um, in some ways, their interests align. Um, for instance, it's easy for a lot of, of the um, big powers fighting in Syria um, to say genuinely that they're motivated to fight terrorist groups like the Islamic State, like Al Qaeda. Um, and, and so there's that motive, there are shared motivations that are easy, low hanging fruit, um, where people can say, we're fighting for the same, um, the same aims in Syria. Um, but just on the other side of the coin, every single actor that's that's fighting on the ground in Syria has a different motive, has some sort of primary motive that's pushing them. We've seen the horrors of Aleppo, and now we're seeing the horrors of eastern Ghouta, and, and yet we also see uh, an international community that seems uh, ill-equipped to deal with this. Uh, talk to us about that. You know, we talk a lot um, about these different ceasefires in Syria, and some of them feel like deja vu when you see the UN come together uh, to, to hash out yet another ceasefire in Syria, and they, they never seem to hold. And the reason why is that these powers that are discussing these ceasefires in the chambers of the UN, not uh, all of those powers, most of them don't have leverage with the actual fighters on the ground in Syria. How long does this war persist, do you think? Right now, you have to look again at, we go back to that first layer of the conflict, which is the civil conflict. And the Syrian government is intent on reclaiming as much of its territory as it can. It's intent on claiming as much of that rebel ter territory as, as it can. And it's, it's being rather indiscriminate in how it goes about it. That's the reason for the incredible amount of civilian casualties that we're seeing in some of the offensives. As long as Syria, the Syrian government has support from external powers like Iran and Russia, as long as it is uh, not convinced that it has enough control of territory, it's going to keep going. Even when the conflict does eventually come to an end, for years this is going to resonate as Syria tries to rebuild itself and as the region, um, again, will start uh, uh, fighting over how to rebuild Syria. So there's different layers that are going to play out to this conflict um, in terms of reconstruction and rebuilding. That's going to be another type of battleground for influence.